Hello IAS Northwest, have a blessed weekend. We are called to persevere. Perseverance, wow. It seems so simple to say, isn't it? We always hear this word from our parents, teachers, well-known people of the world. But applying this in our lives, especially in Christian life, it takes so much things to handle. As Christians, we're not simply called to put our faith in Christ at a moment in time. We are called to persevere. Why? First, God does not promise us an easy life. Perseverance is important, first of all, because God does not promise us an easy life. Some people or your fellow Christians or some preachers may have promised you an easy life if you came to Christ, but God never promised that. Have you ever heard someone say something like, just come to Christ and put your faith in Him and all your problems will be over? We really shouldn't say things like that because they're not true. I certainly believe our lives will be better if we come to Christ, but that does not mean our life will be easy. In fact, in some ways, it could be even harder. Why is it that God doesn't promise us an easy life? First, we live in a fallen world. Paul talks about this in Romans 8, 18 to 21. If you have the Bible with you, can you... Let's use our Bible now. And can you read with me? Where Paul, in this book of Romans, where he says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bandage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Paul describes this world as our present sufferings, not worth comparing, subjected to frustration, and bandaged to decay. God created the world good, but we no longer live in paradise. We live in a fallen world where sin has affected our relationship with God, our relationships with each other, and our relationship to the created order. The entire creation was subjected to frustration because of sin and waits for the day when God will restore creation and make all things right. But in the meantime, this is where we live. God doesn't promise us an easy life because He knows we live in a fallen world. Sin hurts. Sin kills. Sin destroys. And we live in a world that is filled with sin. Second, we should expect trials. Another reason God doesn't promise us an easy life is because He knows that as Christians, we should expect trials. Jesus said, In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have, yes, I have overcome the world. That is in John 16, 33. Jesus knew that for the Christian, the world spells trouble. 
The world stands opposed to God and Christ. And so the world stands opposed to those who would follow Christ. When we stand up for Christ and our faith, we will face opposition. Not only from other people, but from the spiritual realm as well. The Bible says that we are involved in a great spiritual battle. And everyone who takes a stand for Christ basically paints a big target on themselves for spiritual warfare. As Christians, we should expect trials. Next, another reason why we are called to persevere is God does promise to be with us. God doesn't promise us an easy life, but He does promise to be with us. And that's why I like to say that although becoming a Christian will not necessarily make our life or your life easier, but it will make our life better. We are going to go through trials. Anyways, whether you are a Christian or not, all of us experience problems. So why not go through them with God by our side? God offers us two things in particular as we go through life's trials. First, He gives us His peace. First of all, we will know this because He says this in Philippians 4, 6-7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is one of the wonderful promises of Scripture that every child of God should memorize and store in the heart. When you hit those trials in life, and you will, do not give in to worry or anxiety, but simply let us bring our request to God in prayer. There are a lot of things in life that are bigger than you, but you can take comfort in the fact that nothing is bigger than God. When you bring your request to God, you know that God has heard and will answer according to His wisdom power and love and so you may rest secure in him and so god gives you his peace it is a peace unlike anything this world has to offer it is peace unlike anything that this world has ever experienced jesus christ is the prince of peace and his peace passes all understanding and will guard your heart and my heart, and your mind and my mind in Him. Second, He gives us His presence. Not only does God give us His peace, but He also gives us His presence. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, Surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. When you are going through the white hot trials of life, you can take comfort. We can take comfort in the fact that God has promised never to leave our side, never to leave us, never to forsake us. You may not be able to see Him visibly with our physical eyes, but He is there as sure as His Word. All of us know this song like Footprints in the Sand, right? You probably read also this poem, Footprints. Before where the person looked back on his life and saw two sets of footprints in the sand and asked the Lord about it. And the Lord said that the second set was the Lord walking with him throughout life. And then the person noticed something strange. He noticed that 
whenever he had met a particularly difficult child in life, there was only one set of footprints. And so he asked, Lord, why was there only one set of footprints during the hard times? Why did you leave me then? And the Lord answered, I never left you. The one set of footprints you see are mine, for it was then that I carried you. It's a very wonderful poem. That it was in the moments of our hard times, it was then that God carried us. So God does not promise us an easy life, but He does promise to be with you, to be with me, to be with us, and to help us and to carry us through hard times. And knowing that should help us to persevere when life gets tough. Another reason why we are called to persevere is God promises great benefits to those who persevere. One benefit is perseverance develop, develops character. James 1 says this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. We don't rejoice in trials for the sake of the trials themselves. Rather, as Christians, we may rejoice in the trials we face because of the results they produce in us. The testing of our faith develops perseverance, and perseverance develops character. Some of the most solid, mature Christians that maybe we met in life are those who have gone through extreme trials and have persevered. Right? We can hear a lot of testimony in our church too. How they persevere. You don't develop character in a vacuum. You develop character in the trials of life as you persevere and become mature. Another benefit is he who perseveres to the end will be saved. Another benefit of perseverance is God's promise that he who perseveres to the end will be saved. Jesus speaking of the end times in Matthew 24, 12, 13, he said, Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. God promises that when you stand firm and persevere in your faith, even under the worst conditions imaginable, you will be saved. We will be saved. We will be delivered from the fiery trial. In James 1.12, it says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Some Christians have Pay the ultimate price of perseverance, even giving up their lives rather than denying the faith. We call them the martyrs of the church. Yet, even they are ultimately victorious in Christ, because although this world can kill the body, it cannot kill your soul. It cannot kill our soul. All those who persevere will receive the crown of life, that God has promised to those who love Him. This is a beautiful picture of God's deliverance and salvation even in the face of death. He who perseveres to the end will be saved. Friends, Jesus never said that following Him would be easy. Furthermore, 
I do believe that we are in a spiritual battle and that we need to fight the good fight. We need to fight the good faith. We are called to run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. So whatever lies ahead, press on and keep going. Now, how we can help ourselves to persevere in our faith? Bear with me. One, let us draw near to God. When going through trials, we can often feel no one understands us that, or that nobody has experienced what we are going through. However, the truth is all of the heroes of the faith in the Bible went through storms, faced great difficulties, and shared the same emotions. Do we really share the same emotions that we feel today? How do you feel in this time of pandemic? What other feelings that bombarded you during this time of pandemic? Job faced incredible testing. Joseph faced severe trials. The disciples of Jesus were persecuted for their faith in him. Yet, it was their closeness to God that kept them going. Draw near to God. Let us draw near to God and He will draw near to us. He will draw near to you. Second, hold unservingly to the hope we profess. The reason we are encouraged to soak ourselves in Scripture is so that we can recite them when the lies of the enemy come our way and the storms of life feel overwhelming. Let us keep a firm grip on the promise, on the promises that keep us going. So let me share you some of the following verses. Great scriptures. And let us try to memorize this. Declare this within this week or every day of our lives. We can write this in a post note and put in our fridge or finding ways to learn them so that when we feel weak, when you feel weak, distant, or where there is no way forward, we will be reminded that God is greater than our situations and is faithful through it all. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, it says, But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Deuteronomy 31, 6, it says, the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In Isaiah 41 10 it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. In Mark 10 27 it says, With men this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Now the third reason how we can help ourselves to persevere with our faith is consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. If we are to press to press on, then we need people that we inspire us to be more like Jesus. We need people that will propel and motivate us to persevere. Sometimes Giving up seems like the easiest option. But when we have others around us who are spearing us on towards love and good deeds, it makes a big difference. As we recognize the need in our own lives, the scripture teaches us the scripture teaches for us to consider how we may spur one another on, which clearly means it is a corporate responsibility for Christians. If you're available at any time at 5 a.m. and 7 p.m., let us gather together and join with our Zoom fellowships and we can pray one another. We can see all our requests and our friends can pray for us. Fourth, let us encourage 
one another. Oh, friends, this is the easiest to say, right? Encourage one another, but we do not always do. We often have great thoughts of other people and what they do, but rarely do we vocalize our appreciation of others. A word of encouragement can be the difference between someone giving up and persevering. As we create a culture of building others up through encouragement, we will begin to see greater unity and strength within the church, which will further enable us to not simply survive and sustain, but rather to thrive and to live life to the full as Jesus promised. Eyes Northwest, as Christians, we are called to persevere. We are in this for the long haul. That doesn't mean you are going to be perfect. Trust me, you will stumble. I'm going to stumble too and fall along the way. We all do. It does mean that when we fall down, we will get back up again and keep going. When we commit to Christ, it is a lifetime commitment, regardless of whatever trials or persecution we may face along the way. As a Christian, we are called to set our face towards the goal and never look back. Let us pray. We thank you for this moment, Lord, that we reflect about perseverance. Yes, we are called to persevere. Living a Christian life has a lot of challenge. It's hard for us. But with you in our sides, we can be at peace in the midst of storm that we are experiencing. Help us to put our full trust in you to persevere amidst trials. We thank you, Lord, for giving your Son, Jesus Christ, to be with us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the comfort, Lord, that you provide for all of us. As we go our journey this week, help us to persevere, to share our faith to others, to encourage one another, and to motivate one another. We ask for forgiveness for all those things that we have done against your will, as you also forgive those people who offended us. We thank you for all the things that you have provided in our lives. We surrender all our plans, our dreams, and goals into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. See you again next weekend for our service. God bless.